Welcome back to the Independent Podcast, a podcast for independent artists by independent artists. What a treat that we have today. He teaches songwriting at Yale, Wesleyan, the New School, and NYU's Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music. He has many critically acclaimed releases, including compositions for TV and film, but most recently his new book, Music, Lyrics, and Life, A Field Guide for the Advancing Songwriter, uh, is an insightful and thoughtful look into songwriting tackling everything from writer's blog, dealing with the critics, and the importance of journaling, and so much more. I just finished his book last week and can attest to how practical the advice is and how much has changed my perspective on songwriting. Guys, class is in session. Mr. Mike Erico. All right, so get the ball rolling. You tell the audience how you started playing music and how you found yourself teaching songwriting. Yeah, well, this is not a thing that I wanted to be doing. I this is uh, and music was not something that I thought I wanted to be doing. Uh, I just kind of fell into it. My dad is a pianist and took a class, a music class, and it was about popular music. And he's such a classical pianist. A pianist. <laughs> he thought it was like Debussy and like Eric Satie and like twentieth century composers. When he found out, it was like you know, Harry Styles and all that. He was just like, oh, um, I don't, you know, I don't want to do this and I don't want to ask for the money back. And my father and I had the same name. So I just went the next week in his, in his place. <laughs> and like, that's how I started. That, that was the, that was the first um, entrance into, uh, into songwriting. Um, I went uh, and I kind of got into it, whatever I got, I've had a couple of record deals um, and uh, during the touring, I got invited by somebody uh, to speak to, to a class. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, I don't know anything. I'm making everything up. I have no idea what's going on. Amen. <laughs> I love that. Preach, baby. <laughs> and the guy was like, you should just try it, whatever. So I tried and I went to, to a class and I spoke to somebody, you know, to spoke to the students, or whatever. And I just kind of like, had a revelation kind of moment where mm. it was like, wow, I really have something to offer. Mm. Uh, and uh, it feels really generous, you know what I mean? And just really good to be able to do. So I guess you guys probably feel it too, you know, uh, putting out, you know, the podcast and and just sort of setting people straight, you know, on, on right. things, you know, or at least right. commiserating, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because when it comes to songwriting, I like to think I write good songs, but I also have no idea what or why, you know, like, I feel like you could tell me why. Well, you guys, from what I, from what I know from your podcast, uh, uh, you guys write like crazy. Like, yeah. who is the person who has a hundred, uh, masters? That's you. Yeah. I have, I have 150 unreleased and I have 100 out. Okay. That's insane. Uh, <laughs> but, but the fact that you're writing fast, like more and more I think about it, the faster I think you're writing, it's probably better because it's closer to your original ideas mm -hmm. as opposed to like overthinking and overthinking. Yeah. yeah. The big people, I think about Prince a lot with like that. I mean, he just wrote like crazy. Yeah. And he ran his studio kind of like a fire station. You know, he would like, he would ring the bell and everyone would come sliding down the pole at four o'clock in the morning because <laughs> he had an idea, you know right, what I mean? Right, um, right. Like he the... can't do it with just a laptop, of course. So he yeah. had to bring in like the band, had to like, you know, put their pajamas, to take the pajamas off and get there, you know, to, to get to to get to get recording. Yeah. Uh, so the fact that you're doing that, I would bet that some of those you don't even remember. Oh, yeah. I go in there. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But the fact that they're so unconscious like that, I bet yeah. they're really I bet some of them are really great. That's that's just a guess. And not knowing at all, obviously, I, I have not been your Dropbox, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess just based on the speed with which you're doing it. That's uh, yeah. One one big thing for me. And when Alex mentioned that that you were kind of big on completion, you know, like, yeah, uh, that's huge for me. Like usually if I don't finish this, like if I sit down and I leave and I don't finish the song, I'm never finishing that song. And right. I, the next time I come in. So if I sit and in an hour I have a full song, that song will be mastered and will be done and will be put in that folder. So yeah, I have, I have even more like unfinished ideas, but this is like, 
yeah, done songs. So I, I related to you there, just getting it done. That is so crazy, man. Um, uh, I actually don't even want to talk about it because I don't want to jinx you. I don't want to do anything. Uh, uh, I thought it was crazy. I mean, I started a, a new semester and I have this uh, writer who uh, is a witch and she's putting stuff out every new moon and full moon, right? And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I thought that schedule was aggressive. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like you could, I mean, what do you, what are you going to do with all those? So I gonna- just, I just decided, and this is kind of cool for artists to hear. Um, so I release already, I release every two weeks. I release a single every two weeks. So that's, okay. that's already in motion, but I create faster than that, right? Like I create more wow. songs than I'm able to release. So what I'm doing now and there's another option that artists can consider to, uh, you know, provide value for the people who are listening, your fans, your supporters, whatever, and also uh, take maybe some power away from streaming and put revenue into your pocket in a different way. So there are plenty of different options for it, but I'm using like a Patreon alternative. So it's not a Patreon. Patreon to me feels to pay me. You know, it feels too like cash grabby. Oh, it's so in the name. It's right there yeah. in the name. I know. So I always had a hiccup with that. Right. (laughs) So there's another option out there. But basically what I'm going to do is use one of those platforms to. I'm going to upload a song every week to that platform. You can pay nine dollars a month to get a song every week from me. Uh, I already have. And if I never create it again, I have enough to do that for three years. Um, And then there's a free option that comes with some other bonuses. But also I will give one song a month to the free to the free option. All right. So that's kind of a way to give back to the people who, who care about me, who care what I'm doing, who are listening. Um, and then also, if you want to support me financially, nine dollars a month, you can have another song a week in addition to the two songs a month that I already released. By by have, do you mean like on streaming or is it an MP3 or a wave file or what is it? As far as uh, that I'm giving to the listener. Yeah, like- yeah when you give it to them. So, they yes, you, so you sign up for the Patreon alternative um, and you it, when you're logged in, you have access to stream it from there. Yeah. OK, got yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. So just, yeah, digitally stream it. Yeah. I wonder, does Spotify have anything like that? Like Probably. private Spotify? That's a good yeah. question. I know SoundCloud has private. Yes, yeah. yeah. Like a but champagne room for Spotify kind of thing. But. I they I assume they they have got to roll that out at some point, right? Like a like a pay like they'll split the money with the artists or whatever. But there's a private area where there's exclusive songs. Totally. BTS yeah. has nine songs, and for the tenth song, you pay something and it unlocks yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. They've got to roll that out. I yeah, I don't know. Now they're going to. Oh yeah, now they're, yeah, they're gonna somebody's <laughs> somebody's paying attention. <laughs> uh, Alex, what you got next? Anything? Yes, sir. All right. This camera is that's fine. Um all right, so we've had a few people give their takes on writer's block and yeah. how to overcome it. In your book, you've likened writer's block to Bigfoot, and simply put, it doesn't exist. Why as right. artists do we secretly love this idea of writer's block? That's a really good excuse. It's a great crutch. Mm-hmm. I, I'm talking to a guy with 140 songs that ready and masters about writer's block. Um, but it doesn't really exist because um, it was actually, it was made up in the 1940s. This is the history of it, whatever. Mm-hmm. Made up in the 1940s by a Freudian psychiatrist mm-hmm. uh, who said that the reason people have writer's block is because uh, their uh, mothers were stingy while breastfeeding, right? Like <laughs> the, the Freudian sort of explanation uh, from the guy who coined the phrase writer's block, right? So obviously, you know, that explanation kind of got some shade. Um, I can imagine coming out with it now, but like even in the 1940s, everyone was like, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the name, like Bigfoot, like survives, you know, because it's such a good name. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's also something that that's really convenient when you can't figure out what to say. Yeah. Um, I mean, you'll probably relate to this. Like I, I've had a guy, uh, a, a writer came in, a guest named Sam Hollander, who's written for like Panic at the Disco and Weezer and uh, mm-hmm. tons, tons of other people. He said that writer's block 
uh, is the product of not having written yesterday. Mm. That's which awesome. is totally cool. Um, but even if you were to believe that, like that there is writer's block out, that it exists or whatever, um, everyone says that the cure is to write through it. Right. Mm. Which is what you're going to do if you even if you don't even if you right. don't have it, you're going to be writing. So. Yeah. Mm, deciding to diagnose yourself with it is of no value to you because you're going to be doing the same thing regardless. Right. Yeah. Right. It, it's, it's a muscle. Yes, it is a muscle. Right. It's like, you know, you, you, you put up a hundred shots a day, you'll make more shots after a while. You write yeah. a song a day mm -hmm. for, you're going to be able to write songs easier. Well, I think right. two people will be like, like I, don't I don't have anything to write, write about, about. But, but like, if, if you act your last song, song you, you can, can write about the same thing. thing. In a different yeah. way. Like yeah. you can write about, Right. So you describe things. I mean, people, yeah, people have been doing that forever. A love yeah. song. People write a love song in a million different ways, you know, right. I mean? right. or a heartbreak song. There's only so many topics. You know? <laughs> so, actually, I'm curious what do you do? Do you journal? No. <laughs> you don't bother. Why would you bother? I mean, like, yeah. It's, uh... I, I think, man, I don't, I don't know because I don't want to take, I don't want to make it seem like why can't everybody do this but i also don't want to like take away from like it is a muscle you know like i don't i don't know what the balance is but sure, sure. um yeah i i just sit down and i just start and i think that's man i always said if i had writer's block i would just write about having writer's block you know well but, that, yeah that's something that people say to do yeah right like you can just do that you know right. so but yeah i uh man i don't there were, I was telling somebody about how many songs I have. Uh, I don't remember. Maybe Steve Moyer. Do you know Steve Moyer? I'm not sure. He, he's a, I don't know. He's one guy used to be high up somewhere. I don't know where. And I've only spoken to him a couple of times. No, it wasn't him. It was it was the it was the president of Arista. That's who it was. I don't remember his name. The president of Arista. I was talking with him, and he said there was another artist big name don't remember his name either and <laughs> and uh he was just in the flow right and and at that moment he said the music is in me like it's in me right now and if i stop and if i kill that flow and i kill that momentum then i could lose it you know or whatever and it's kind of kind of like what you were saying it's the product of not writing yesterday mm -hmm. yeah. so it's kind of like that for me like I, I do feel like it's just in me i sit down and it just comes out and i don't uh and i feel like if i was to stop you know, um, yeah. that it, that it might stop. So I just haven't stopped. <laughs> I also feel like your default right. mode is to write. Like if there's ever a break in the day or like yeah. a gap between activities, mm -hmm. your default is to sit at the computer yeah, and start right. writing yeah. something. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I mean, I have so many questions for you. I mean, I think that's really cool. Like there's some, if there's some, something that you have that I could impart to my students, I mean, I, that would be amazing for them, you know, I give them like my, I tell them that the minimum is one song a week and they mm. groan, oh my God, the eyes roll. And like, it was like, how wow. could I possibly, how can I, whatever, like you're killing us, whatever. And I'm like, this is the, this is, I'm giving you a minimum. I mean, right. if you're saying I'm invited to come speak at Yale. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but then like, you know, they figure it out and they do it because they have to, you know yeah. what I mean? And like that deadline is like really inspiring to them. Yeah. Do you give yourself deadlines that you probably do? Uh, I'm in a, I'm in a different place currently. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so the first, when I started pursuing music as a career in 2019, I, gave myself the goal slash deadline of a single with the music video every two weeks. And that was what I did the first year that I pursued music as a career. So I did have this, this deadline and I, and I, you know, I announced it to people and blah, blah, blah. So it held me accountable to just write and record every two weeks. Um, and at that time I was doing it in my free time. I had a whole nother business. I had a whole nother. So it was like a free 15 minutes or if it was like I had an hour car ride or if it was blah, blah, that's where I was like melodies, lyrics, um, and oftentimes, what a lot of people do, I do, I start with melody first. I mumble melodies, and then I fill in with words. Right. Um, so, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people take that approach. Rarely do I sit down and write lyrics, like a poem, you know, and then try to uh, 
add it over something later. But when I do that, I find I create more unique melody because I'm trying to fit something I've already written over something else. And then it'll, an unusual, more unique melody will come from that. Yeah. I mean, just like mixing up your schedule. It's like, again, it's like going to the gym. If you mix up your routine, yeah. uh, it you're, you're sore in a different way, but you're also getting some different benefit, you know? Yeah. It's so cool. Um, it really is. Love it. Yeah, I've got more questions. Um, I would have killed for a songwriting course at my school. For those of us that wish we could have taken your course, is there anything you can share about your curriculum and can you give us some homework? <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> I, I feel like I can't give you guys uh, homework. I guess uh, uh, if you have that many things in your, uh, you know. Well, that, that, <laughs> yeah, for, for, for everyone listening. Yeah. You might want to just check your cables and clean your place. I don't know. That, that might be a moment <laughs> uh, for you guys. Um, uh, yeah, I would have killed to have a songwriting class too. And in fact, that's one of the reasons I, uh, am teaching is because, mm. and it's another reason why I, uh, mentor because like I had a, I had a couple of deals and uh, record deals and big sort of budgets and everything else. No manager, no idea what I was doing. Like I had backed into a songwriting class because my dad and I have the same name. You know what I mean? Right. Next thing I know, I'm like, who are we going to get to produce your debut? Whatever. And like all of that kind of craziness. So uh, I was uh, really uh, uh, adrift. You know what I mean? So yeah. the fact that I'm able to, I don't know, fix something in my own past for other people, um, mm -hmm. that to me is like, that's the thing. That's the thing yeah. for me. That's what, dri that's what drives me uh, a lot. Um, so uh, the other half was homework. I mean, okay, here's homework. Uh, actually, I give homework in the back of the book. There's a, there's a list of right. books called Summer Reading for Some Time Later in Life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are really great books there and i'm not trying to sell the book if you want to know those books i also keep a goodreads which is like attached to amazon but it's like a book reading list whatever mm -hmm. and i made what they call a bookshelf and like those books are on that list so like if you just look me up on goodreads you can mm -hmm. you can find the books but it's like it's books about like other types of art forms and how they interrelate you know right. so like for the book, I spoke to like an astrophysicist about repetition, right. right? Not just choruses, but also like what we're finding from the James Webb telescope. I mean, it makes no sense that we're looking out 300 million light years and we're seeing like spirals and Nautilus looking things and whatever, and like patterns that we absolutely recognize across an impossible distance. Like, and what's going on there is something that we love and react to in music in our brains. Like that makes no sense to me. Like, uh, and yet there, you know, there it is. Um, so I did stuff like that just so that people could like think about songwriting in a in a different sort of way. Um, that was also kind of funny. Like, like I, I did another thing where like I looked at song form. Like song form is really simple. If you look at the Billboard chart, right? Right. I mean, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, like the form is very easy to understand. So mm -hmm. like what, then of course my students all want to be like creative geniuses, right? So the mm -hmm. first thing they want to do is break apart the song mm -hmm. form and sh reinvent the wheel, right? Mm -hmm. So I literally went to Goodyear and I went to a mechanical engineer and I was like, why are your tires all round, right? Why do you continue to work you're such geniuses, right? You know every compound and tread and weather pattern and whatever, and yet you have been unable to break out of the essential form of this thing. You can't come up with anything better, can you? They're like, no, we don't try. We don't try anymore. Why? Because round freaking rolls. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so if round, round rolls, song form rolls, so then when we go to class and we check out like As It Was by Harry Styles, and he's opening with the half chorus at the intro, mm -hmm. instrumental, and then he dro drops into a verse. It's like, well, 
I don't understand. The Beatles did that in 1964. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So there's something very, uh, uh, that, that correlates. Um, and it's got something to do with our brains. So I, I talk a lot about the brain, but I also talk to just other, other people uh, in other art forms um, to get to the sort of, so almost like unified field. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I'm sorry that I'm talking about the unified field, but um, it, it is sort of a unifying kind of theory, you know, that we're all sort of doing kind of ish the same thing because we're all, our brains operate in a lot in the, in the same way. And they have not evolved like a tremendous amount, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're who we were when we were living in caves, more or less, you know, right. Be better hygiene. Sure. But uh, other than that, I mean, it's a little, it's pretty much, it's pretty close. Um, right. we, we still love a lot of the same things. And we repeat those things in housing, in painting, in, uh, you know, everything else. <clears throat> so that's the homework. There's your homework. Love it. Uh, love it. Read the books uh, and, and mm -hmm. look around. I would say, like, look around for correlations between uh, other art forms and songwriting and, and see, like, the... Uh, the the common ground between those things. Love it. Love it. Awesome. That's pass fail. That's pass fail. I remember when I was looking through the list of books in there, there was a couple in there I read. I remember them. One of them was what I talk about when I talk about running. That was Amazing. a great book. That's a great book. I yeah. love that book. That was fantastic. You like, um, yeah, that's Haruki Murakami, which Yes, that's good. if you like crazy people who can walk through walls and like fish oh, yeah. the, the rain of fish, like, like just things that can't, you know, right, talking dogs, whatever, that kind of thing. That's your guy. Uh, yeah. there, there's a book called wind up bird Chronicle, which is, which is fiction. But what I talk about running, what I talk about when I talk about running is about running, but he right. does like ultra marathons and, mm -hmm. and he talks about how that correlates to his writing process. Right. By the way, right. the Sam Hollander guy, the, the writer's block guy, um, mm -hmm. got his discipline from a dinner he had with Steve Nash, the basketball player, um, mm -hmm. who had a Hall of Fame career with not a Hall of Fame body, really. I mean, to be honest, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. But a work ethic that he passed on to Sam uh, mm -hmm. that was like, you, during the season, you never take a day off never mm. and so uh sam was like okay what is the season for a songwriter and so the season you know is a little bit like spring through to like around thanksgiving ish or whatever because everyone wants to have a you know a vacation and go and, and do that thing whatever but he's like then every day uh, he doesn't miss a day and like he credits steve nash for that Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. I keep going. I've got more questions. I got a question. Specifically, I've noticed, at least with Nick's music, music and then other surrounding, and then other surrounding independent, independent artists, I've seen a trend of songs typically <laughs> being a little bit shorter than they were 10, 15 years ago. Um, um, just do you have any comments, any comments or thoughts on that? On that or... Yeah. Well, th that's, that's an interesting thing. I've been teaching uh, almost like nine years or something. Um, when I started, like a good song, an average or whatever, was like, let's all drop and like hit a target at like 315, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now, 245, 250 is a healthy song, you know? Mm -hmm. It's still, oddly, I hate to talk about the Beatles in a songwriting conversation because it's kind of a cliche, <laughs> but their songs were under two minutes, like some of them. You know, mm -hmm. like if you look, it's like 158, one, you know, stuff like that. So it's, this is not new, but like, right. so what is happening that's different now than what was happening, happening 10 years ago or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. If you look at it and you graph it against money, uh, mm -hmm. you can sort of, you can sort of see how these things are correlating, you know, in the 70s 80s like it was like all the money and all the time in the world and you get songs that are 15 minutes long you know um now i i wrote an article once 
when I found out that Spotify pays for 30 seconds, that it constitutes a stream and then it pays out, right? 30 seconds. So the article I wrote, which went viral, was like, why are we writing songs that are 32 seconds long? You know what I mean? Like, why would you bother? Uh, mm -hmm. If I get paid at 30 seconds, you don't get three minutes. Do I do that with the Uber? No, like that does not happen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't happen, uh, you know, you don't get to pay for the first half mile and then end up, you know, 10 miles right. away. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I do think that those kind of financial pressures are actually working on, on song form. Of course, there's mm -hmm. also attention and all that kind of stuff, whatever. But everybody still likes a chorus, like in the, the yeah. shortest song ever. Like the shortest song ever that hit the Billboard chart during my class, it was by Lil Tecca. Um, mm. And I don't remember the song right now, but I remember the form. The form was open with the chorus, verse, chorus, chorus. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Like, that's, that's amazing. Like, and yeah. yeah, Lizzo almost is almost that, but she does grow it out into a full thing. But Lizzo's had a few songs yeah. that kind of like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm a, I'm, way, dude. I'm a yeah. big advocate for mm -hmm. shorter songs. Yes, I, uh, I, I, ho I, I hover around two minutes and sometimes under, sometimes a little over. You know, that's like my sweet spot, and that's usually verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. I mean, uh, that's that's really happening. And what's interesting, you know, talking about the form, I, I don't if I if this is too nerdy, whatever. But like, just shut me up. But like. Uh, uh, bridges, right? Bridges used to be a yeah. thing, and now yeah. they are like an extravagance, you know? Like, oh my God, there's like a extra moment. And so instead <laughs> of having that extra moment, what's happening is that, um, you know, you have like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, then a total flip, right? Like the whole, uh, you know, a completely different setting, different rhythm section, different tempo, different everything. You get like a, an outro, you get like a yeah. credit roll. Um, uh, so that sort of gives you a little bit of like an extra sort of little piece of candy at the end of the song. Um, yeah. but, uh, but again, by and large, I mean, it's, it's the big, big songs have a very similar form, maybe a little yeah. bit more depressed, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's funny to look at people that are like supposedly iconoclasts in the, the music industry and then chart their songs, you know, which mm -hmm. is funny to me. Like Billie Eilish was like, oh, she's breaking the mold. She's doing all this stuff. Oh my God, incredible. If you chart her song, it could have been a Kelly Clarkson tune. Like mm -hmm. uh, Bad Guy is written so tight, so perfectly. It, same with the Lord, same with like a bunch of these kind of iconoclasts. Same, yeah. by the way, as Nirvana, right? Nirvana was like back in the day was like jumping, diving into the drums and, you know, doing yeah. all this stuff, or whatever. But if you chart Smells Like Teen Spirit, it's like, oh, this guy wanted to be on the radio and wanted mm -hmm. to be playing arenas. Like that's yeah. what was going on. You can see it in the architecture of what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. I have a question that you touched on real quick. When you say that they were written so tight, what do you mean by that? That like, every moment was was used. There's no space for. Yeah. You know, that's exactly. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's that's what I mean. Like, um, mm -hmm. if you look at like indie, you have, you have to go to like the indie charts or whatever, and you get like mm -hmm. these kind of mopey sort of shoegazy kind of guys who are like, ah, you know, choruses are for you know losers. You know what I mean? Or it's like, it's kind of like. I'm gonna let this thing like ride out and and have a different kind of ride. I'm, I'm not I'm not mm -hmm. making fun of anybody, but but um, they're looking for a different kind of ride, and it's a less mm -hmm. pop ride, and it's a more uh, it's it's a more mysterious kind of uh, ride, and they do things like they don't um, they don't set the title in the chorus the way Miley Cyrus would. They'll like duck sure. it around like an Easter egg or something like that in the spot, <laughs> bottom of the second verse or something like that. Yeah. Um, so that kind of thing is kind of um, more. Uh, that's just a, it's just another ride, you know that that whole 
that whole thing is is, is very different ride. Um, but, you know, anyway, it all it, it all depends on like, a ride. You know. So. Yeah. I had a thought about when you said, you know, your students kind of roll their eyes when you say a song a week or a song or song yeah. song a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it might be because they they put a pressure on themselves to write a great song mm -hmm. in a week and not just write a song. Yeah. You know, yeah. because if you write a song a week, you'll get a great song in there eventually. Right. You know, yeah. and then and then over time, great songs become more frequent because oh. you. Right. You, you right. getting that muscle working. So I think right. maybe that's why they roll their eyes is just because they're like, how can I write the best song I possibly can every single right. week? You right. Know? Nick, when's the first like, time that you reflected on a song or was like, this is a, like a great song? Like the first time that you were really. The first time? Yeah. That you were like kind of blown away, like with yourself. <laughs> blown away with myself. Uh, <laughs> Take a step back and you're like. Yeah. This is like, like objectively, <laughs> if we look at a song like my field, I think like, yeah, like everyone's saying like, that's a really well written song. Right, right, right. What's, what's the first like what's the first song that you wrote that, that you were like, I, I, I kind of did my thing. I, I'm my own biggest fan, dude. I know <laughs> <you are>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, I think there's always glimmers of those moments, right, where you're like, dang, I outdid myself here, yeah. you mm -hmm. know. Right. But I don't know that there's like. I can't pick a moment, but I do, I do know the feeling after I write one. I'm like, this one stands out obviously right. more than, right. more than others. Um, I'm going to make a guess. My guess yeah. is your best song, not, no, obviously don't know the Dropbox. Your best song is in the Dropbox and you don't remember it. And you're going to be, be, you're going to, you're going <laughs> to, you're going to trip over and you're like, oh my God, this is purple rain or whatever. you know what i mean you're just gonna be like holy shit right, right. That, that happens so like... you're saying i'm prince <laughs> I know, I picked up that comparison too. without knowing it, you know without knowing it. and simply because you've done <laughs> there have been so many at bats right yeah I'm like i just feel like if i sat there in a batter's box against you know a, a national league pitcher or something like that yeah. and just swung the bat eventually i would hit it exactly <laughs> Even just me, I would get probably get hit more than that. Man, that's but, my life's motto. Right. Yeah, I, I really. That's, that's what I hope to, for my students. That's why I tell yeah. them like, okay, it's a song a week, but that's a minimum. Yeah. Hit the, hit the gas. Figure yeah. it out later. Just figure it out later. You know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. So that, now, Nick, with, with this service that you're having, where it has the song a week to mm -hmm. the people think, are you ever? hesitant that like one of those songs might have been like a hidden gem and then would you release that song oh yeah i'd definitely release it yeah, yeah for you, sure you hear the feedback that i, I think it's also like if you get enough people in there and you are getting feedback like it's like you got a hundred person survey or a thousand person survey yeah of like, it's almost getting like a little focus group. yeah get a little focus group or you know then and one of them stands out they're like yo nick what are you doing putting this <laughs> in, in here yeah put it out to the world I'm trying to listen you know. to this on my spotify yeah. yeah so i mean yeah that could be a, a, a absolutely i'm still gonna release songs that i put in inside that you know yeah content. but you'll never you'll never know which one is the one right and unless you do the step that you're doing right 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 because right. because otherwise it's you know it's me going based off of what i feel mm -hmm. and right. you know it does good the feeling the gut feeling does good but you know Giving it to the people, let you know, feeding it to the wolves and, and letting them decide is kind of well, the just best. recently you released a song that was in there for a while, right? Yo, yeah, I just released a song actually that was, I wrote two years ago and it was just sitting in the Dropbox for so I, I wrote a song called Icy Pop and it had a viral moment and you know it's got 40 million streams on it and okay. um and that same week I wrote this other song called Over and Done and uh, it's been sitting in there since. So two years ago, it's just been sitting in. And I decided to release it, and I release it, and I don't even make, make great content for it. Maybe a couple pieces to promote it, and then it goes on. And it does like over two main streams in the first month, you know. And it's like yeah. now it's just cruising, and it just goes to show you like that was sit. That was just it was sitting in my job for two years, and now it's you know as an artist like over two main probably has three main streams now. That's twelve thousand dollars you know that yeah. that a song that was just sitting in a folder you know yeah i i have a lot of students who that's happened to 
And I think it's because, you know, we're not really the, the right judge a, a yeah. lot for a lot of the things that we do. So like there's a band, former students, a band named uh, Kufune. And, they, you know, they were moving along. They were doing their thing, whatever. They blew up on TikTok. They're now signed to Elektra. They're out on the road doing the whole thing, selling out 500, 700 thousand cap rooms. And like their first song is a song that went called Tech It and it's on, you know, it's on TikTok and everything. Their second biggest song is that song sped up and their mm -hmm. third biggest song is that song slowed down. <laughs> like and they're, just, they're just riding it, you know? Yeah. Um, but it just, it was out for a while, but it just wasn't time yet. And then all of a sudden it was time, you know? Yeah. You must see that all the time with, oh, your, yeah. with your own stuff, with your, with your content that you put on. Yeah, absolutely. It's weird. Absolutely. And now they're going to shut it down anyway. So, or TikTok anyway. Yep. Uh, yeah. I'm glad I, you know, I'm glad I got started a couple <laughs> years ago. <laughs> so do you think they're going to do that? Um, you know what? They talked about it before, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I man, I don't have I actually didn't even know until Alex told me. Alex came in one day, he's like, dude, TikTok. I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> he's like, it's what do you mean? Yeah, it's all over. You haven't seen it? I'm like, no, I haven't seen it. Uh yeah, I had no idea. But um, but I like TikTok, for example, it's a great platform, still great. I think if it goes, something else comes in its place, right? Obviously. Yeah. Uh, slash Facebook Reels is an amazing place yeah. uh, for organic traction. You have Instagram Reels and you have YouTube Shorts. I mean, there's already other options. Right. Um, there's even things like Lasso, like Facebook's Lasso. I don't know. They, I don't know if that's still a thing, but um, there's like all these little startup things that if you're an early adapter to the to all of them, and then one of them breaks through, right. that's going to be huge if you're if you're in there early. So, um, Amp, uh, the Amazon. That? There's one uh, Amazon is doing called Amp. Which is kind of like radio. Okay. Yeah. Clubhouse, do you like? Oh yeah, Clubhouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's. I mean, man. Meanwhile, Absolutely. meanwhile, this is what drives me. I, I would love to do an article on this. Somebody goes to work at MySpace today. Like, wow. MySpace is alive, which means that there must be an office somewhere. Oh, shot. Sure. There's like a coffee <laughs> machine and a water cooler and desks. Yeah. You might break the internet with that alone. <laughs> I would Maybe just love just to time. go and just see like a day it's in the life time. of someone working on MySpace. You Cake, know? Said, Cake said it's just Tom. He's just he's just <laughs> old now. <laughs> Same profile Tom, picture. Yeah. Tom, just Tom cruising is long it, gone. He's like he's he's the person everyone wishes they, they could be. You know, he, he's out. He he was in. He sold. He moved on, and he's he hadn't even heard from him since. I mean, he was in my top eight a couple times, man. Yeah, like, yeah. I think he's like taking pictures of, of of like water creatures and stuff. Like he's a photographer. He's, he's living his dream life. Yeah, so what good. he's up to, man. So good. And Tom, man. Yeah, he's got him. Anyway, you got. Yeah. yeah, I've got more. I can keep going. Yeah. Um, there's one section I have you related to the section that you had written about brand of a songwriter and artist, especially the Lucy Dacus quote. Yeah. Uh, oops, I lost my spot. Uh, especially the Lucy, Do Lucy Dacus quote. I'd love to share with the listeners your thoughts about brand and what role that should play and whether or not someone releases a song. Yeah. Well, this is the re this is the reason why there people aren't putting out songs or finishing songs at your pace mm -hmm. uh, is because so many times people will come come into the class and they'll have like a big disclaimer at the beginning like this isn't really what I do this isn't really my brand this isn't really my thing whatever and you know the the answer is like you just did it so it is your thing this is your <laughs> thing you just don't want to admit to your thing you know what I mean uh, and the Lucy quote is more like there's no such thing as a brand it's it's your that's who you are and mm -hmm. somebody, somebody changed that word or came up with a word like writer's block or bigfoot now right. it's your brand um which is like a cage you know and that when you're in that cage and you're then you're fearful of leaving or you're feeling like you can't leave then that's when songs don't get finished right. and that's when that's when you start your thinking starts tightening you know yeah. Um, 
the, the, it's so funny, like the faculty, like faculty meetings are like, I don't know what's wrong with these students. No one's paying attention, man. Just put it out. Just put it out and see what works. Mm -hmm. Beta test it, right? Like you're on the iPhone 14 or whatever. That means there were 13 others that they just put out to see how it's working, you know? And then they fixed it and sold it again. You're talking my language. <laughs> Speak my language, Mike. Well, there's a little bit of that. There, there really is. Um, there is something to that. And there's something also to being like very precious, which is like, is another way to go. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Was, everyone's got their process or whatever, you know, and I don't want people to put stuff out and then be embarrassed by it, but then you can just pull it back. Yeah. Or so, just be mad at Mike. <laughs> <laughs> right. they, they put it out and it goes bad and they're just like, Mike, man, he told me. to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a testament though to this because I dabble in all kinds of genres. I dabble in all kinds of sounds mm -hmm. just because I like making music. I like writing songs. Sure. So this is this is interesting. The first Afrobeats song that I made, I made a song in a you know just in that dance hall kind of Afrobeats genre, more Afrobeats because it leans pop with the melodies and the lyrics. But um, I put it out uh, two weeks ago, and it's currently the number two song on the iTunes Afrobeats charts for my first my first try. And like it's not it's my I have a hundred songs out. This is my first Afrobeats song. So it's like, should I just stay pop? Should I stay singer songwriter? Should I stay, you know, in that little area, and, and or just release this and then boom? Now, one thing I noticed about you guys is that you were like, you go back and forth. It's so funny uh, in the in your podcast where like you're like go deep into the analytics of of something, right? And you're like, well, who did this? Who's actually listening? Is it my people coming over to Afrobeats, or is there like a Venn mm -hmm. diagram? Where yeah. Afrobeat listeners and my beat listeners just happen to be together, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. and then and then you'll be like, you know what? Just do what you feel. That's and it, that's baby. Come <laughs> on, man. Feels right. That's the yeah, other baby. side of what you guys are talking about, right? So like you're going. I, I just feel you guys sort of like toggling back and forth between those things, and that's just what everyone's going through. But yeah. meanwhile, you're going through it while making stuff. You know, right, 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 right. right. Life is a seesaw. Are you now man. doing analytics for your Afrobeats <laughs> song? No, I I am the the anti analytic. There's Connor Price who's on episodes, <laughs> so he's very analytic. Alex, are you analytic? I can't. Alex is being a analytic. So I think what you what you hear there is like, I'm like Connor, freaking stop, you know? <laughs> like you know, I'm like I'm like just do it, man. Because I right. my my whole brand is is Freddie F R D I, and if it it's, yeah, yeah. feels right, do it. Feels right. So uh, feels right, don't it? So it's like everything I do is just based off feel. Like I made that song, I was like this feels good. I made two other ones on that same day. I made three songs that day, and two of the other ones that I made are just really great pop songs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I like this one. You know, I like this this Afrobeats. So I'm like, let me just do that one. And yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, yeah. I say he's like Thanos. He's just collecting each genre. <laughs> yeah, we all start to get a little nervous when Nick starts to go into your genre. Like, <laughs> what's your genre? What's your genre? <laughs> like, I, do have, I do have a question. Do you have any pet peeves or anything when it comes to songwriting? Uh, I don't have... Well, I don't have pet peeves for other people. For mm -hmm. me, listening... Um, this is going to sound just so cringe and old, or, or I don't even know what it's going to be, but like, um, it bums me out how easy rhymes can be with like plain old, just like garden variety curse words, you mm -hmm. know, like, yeah, like explicit lyrics that have the same rhyme every time. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. there's a moment where. Bacardi and party were a thing over and over and over again. And I was just like, I can't, now I can't stand either thing. I can't stand <laughs> rum and I can't stand going to party. <laughs> um, and so there, there are some things that like feel sort of, they can feel lazy, you know, which kind of bums me out. Yeah. But I don't, they're not really, they're not really pet peeves because like we have so much control that, I just turn it off before I have a peeve. You know what I mean? Sure. It's just, you know, um, 
So, and that's interesting. Another thing that you were just reminding me of, like I thought a watershed moment was Kanye because we're streaming, which means we still have control of the, of the physical copies of this thing. Remember when Kanye put something out and he was like, ah, you know, don't like it. And he pulled it back mm. and then re-released it. Like that to me on that level was crazy. Like that was yeah. like, wow, you really don't have the files. You really never do have the files. And like, right. if you uh, lapse on your like Amazon or Netflix, uh, your movies go. They, you don't own them. The ones you bought, you don't own because right. you don't ever have like the physical copy of it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. To me, that's just more reason to put stuff out. Yeah. Right. If Kanye can pull it back, you can too. For sure. Right. You can do what you want. <laughs> kind yeah, of. Kind of. Um, yeah, and this, back to the the car the, 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 the car party, party <laughs> thing. thing. Um, um, there was this group that I used to follow, follow Motion Twist, Twist, and yeah. they, they didn't cuss on music for the longest time, time because, just because they said, like, cussing is a cop out. out. It's like mm -hmm. easy, just, just lazy, lazy writing. writing. I always, I always thought, thought that, that was interesting. interesting. Yeah, there can there can be a powerful, because uh, yeah. I also I also don't uh, curse in my music, but I I usually I I do that mainly because. I have kids and, you know, I, I want my kids to be able to listen to my stuff and I want other people's kids to be able to listen to my stuff. You know, I don't want to shut off a whole, a whole age group just because of words I'm choosing. Um, 100%. 100%. So, you know, but I do feel in some songs, I'm like, that was a well-placed F-bomb. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know? definitely. <laughs> that's, the other, that's the other side of it, right? They're like, well, it's such an immediate type of word and it totally works and nothing else works with that kind of like uh sort of record scratch kind of moment yeah. in a conversation that like a like yeah. a well-placed f-bomb or whatever yeah um yeah. so that's always the debate we have so what i tell that them is like, like a book title man pro con -bomb. what are the pros of doing it what are the cons of doing it yeah. who's winning whichever right. one wins whatever yeah you know? yeah some people sound really stupid curtsing i have to say yeah like it just doesn't yeah. sound like something they would do. It's something sounds like something they wrote. Yeah, yeah. I think that's often uh, a lot of people struggle with songwriting is they'll write about oftentimes what they think people want to hear, and then uh, that's why I think there's a lot of one-hit wonders, right? Because it wasn't true to them. It didn't connect with the audience. You got a lot of casual listeners. No one really right. cared about you. And then you have to try to follow up something that was fake in the first place, All right? So it's you know like you're, you're constantly chasing that. Yeah, you mentioned that in another podcast. I mean, I was driving, so I don't know what the episodes were, but yeah. uh, you mentioned it about like people popping off on the wrong song. You said, yeah, I, I thought yeah. that was really uh, um, astute, you know, because like uh, some people are like, if you pop off, you pop off. That's an amazing thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you're on TikTok and you popped off because you walked into a glass plate, like you, that's not, yeah, that's not a media career. Yeah, you are. It's hard, it's hard off. to put a career off that, exactly. Like, like if you, you blow, blow up on TikTok yeah. because, because of how you, you would stand, stand away. <laughs> right. Well, and, yeah. That's a different that's a different, it's hard, it's conversation, hard, Mike. Hard, hard, that's hard. a different conversation, Mike. We're not gonna uh, we're not gonna dive deep into that one. <laughs> uh Alex, you got any final yeah, yeah I, I there's just one quote in the book that I really like, uh, and I think it'd be a great way to wrap it up. Uh, oop, losing my spot. <clears throat> if you're a writer, show up for work, just like everybody else. So go to work. It's good there. You don't have to love it every day. Find ways to make it fun. Taco Tuesday, Crazy Shirt Thursday, Casual Friday, mix it up, but show up. Your boss is looking. That that stuck with me. I love that. Because I feel when, at least when I sit down to write, and, and maybe Nick, you can, you know, um, I don't think you get to pick whether you write a good song or a bad song that day, but you get to pick whether you get to write that day. So that, mm. that quote really stuck with me. Yeah. Uh, I'm so, that. You just made me glad to, I, I wrote it. That That's a great, that's a great feeling uh, to, you know, to hear your, yeah, another thing you said in the podcast, it's really, it's an amazing thing to, to go live and to play a show and have people, you know, sing your words back to you, um, mm -hmm. uh, to hear your words coming back to you in, in a generous way like that, I really appreciate. Um, 
And it's really true. But it sounds to me like you guys are getting into the office before the boss even shows up. So I don't, I don't know if it's, <laughs> I don't know if that was helping you like uh, so much, but, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good place. We do do talk, we do Taco Tuesday, by the way, in my house. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 for our talking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ortega has a nice taco kit. Just saying, not sponsored. Oh, well, it easy. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Not sponsored by Ortega just yet. <laughs> so we all yeah. way up, man. I'm really glad that the, uh, the book resonated for you. That's that's just a really great thing. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's a great book. My girlfriend's mother is a librarian, and she saw it. And I actually, funny enough, I was about halfway through it before I realized that this is a signed copy. Uh, Whoa! Yet, if you want me. Whoa! Um. But I, she gave it to me, and it sat on my desk for a week. And I was like, I should probably look at it. And then I got four pages in, and I was like, Oh, I have to finish. This. <laughs> so my very insight. Thank you. Amazing. I love it. All right. Well, uh, I think that about wrap wrap it up, right? right on. Thank awesome. you so much, Mike. Really appreciate the time. Thank you. I can't wait to hear all 7,000 songs that you guys haven't released yet. But our fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll be they'll be they'll be coming, man. Um, I love all right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Right Another episode. Much love. See ya.